Hi folks, it's good to be with you and love to everybody out there. Um, I'm just sharing my heart today. I'm quite discouraged today. Um, for the whole week, uh, I've been wrestling and struggling with an issue. I've mentioned it before and um, I want to mention it again. But I've been really, really struggling and, it, and it's caused me a lot of anxiety and a lot of, lot of stress. So I'm sharing with you, and the reason why I'm sharing it with you is because I'm asking for people to pray, and also for people to step up to the plate and to realize that things need to change for the better. So I don't want to pick out any individuals. I don't want to uh, criticize any individuals. Um, but I feel that I need to make this video because it's hindering the work of God certain issues and, and they need to be sorted out. Today I went out to uh, preach, I packed my car and I've come back and I feel very very sad and very upset. Uh, I was talking to a brother, some of you know who that brother is, and I was talking to a brother while I was in the car and I was on the phone to this brother and the brother was saying that they believe in annihilationism and um, and I came back I didn't go preaching uh, that day I just came home because I felt really upset and I just couldn't preach because I was I was so hurt really I, this brother I loved to bits uh, do anything for this brother and, and it just saddens me um, so I've come home but I've come home today because I've been stressed all week I've mentioned what the issue is and, and, and now I'm gonna just tell you tell you what it is really for three four maybe five years I've been preaching on the streets and um, I take a table and I take uh, equipment now, uh, a microphone, but mainly I've been taking a table and I take a microphone and basically the idea is the table's there for people to, to get a hold of, to take literature, excuse me, free books are put there, free literature. and. Um, preaching, uh, people are allowed to preach, I let people preach, use the microphone and we preach and over the years it's been difficult but we're beginning to gain a hearing by Manchester people, many Manchester people come up to me, shake my hand and many people come to, to listen to the preaching um, many people come to ask questions and to discuss uh, at the table, uh, and many of them are and are not Christian, and they and they seek, they're seeking. But over the years, I've never had the confidence to uh, tell people that this is a ministry, and I had the confidence to tell people that there's some basic rules and. I've, ne I've never had the confidence to to say to people if, if you're coming to the table the certain standards um, and so I've never really uh, told people what the guidelines are and, and so what's happened is year upon year we, we have lots of people coming down to the table lots of people helping we get evangelist pastors we get people from churches, from people who are Christian but they don't go to a church and they all come down and they all help. But over the years um, we've had many many issues, many many problems and it's hindered the work. Um, so in the past we've had people, Christians, uh, lose their temper at the table over the years. We've had uh, young men come 
who a hyper Pentecostal tried to put uh, tried to convert everybody to their view. Uh, we've had arguments between Calvinists and Calvinism and uh, Zionism. Um, we've had um, pastors come and throw the weight about, telling everybody what to do. We've had people come um, who when you're having a conversation, they butt into your conversation. Um, we've had people try to set up Bible studies with with teenage uh, teen t teenagers and things on their own. Uh, people trying to counsel people who are vulnerable. Uh, and people mean well. People are trying to help, uh, but they get they get in the way. Um, and I've, and. In the end, uh, it, it gets to the point where, and, and people who say they're with us and then they go off argue with Jehovah's Witnesses and then they come back and then they go off again and, and you just, you, you're just spinning, you don't know who's with you, what, what's happening. Young preachers who, who are too, too uh, not very good at dealing with crowds and, and being aggressive. Um, and uh, and in the end, I, I've had to. I, I talked to the pastors of my church, and I've talked to many Christians, and everybody says I have a right to to give some guidelines to to make sure there's some order there. Um, and so I've written these guidelines. Um, which I'll read out in a minute. And these guidelines I'm, I'm going to give to every everybody who helps me, whether you're a past on a Saturday that is. Uh, through the week I, I have, like I'll give you an example, like uh, a brother Frank from Holland who's a great guy, I don't have to give him these guidelines because he, he's a mature Christian worker, he, he knows what he's doing. So I, I don't have to give him these guidelines. There's a, a brother called Alan I'm going to Oxford. I don't have to give him these guidelines because they're mature believers. They, they know how to conduct themselves. They know what they're doing. There are people that I go out street preaching with around the country. I don't have to give them these guidelines. I've written these guidelines because on Saturday a lot of people that come down, they, they haven't got, even pastors, even evangelists, haven't got a basic understanding sometimes of the way to conduct oneself in an evangelistic setting of encouraging people to work together. These basic guidelines are just what any Christian would want to obey and follow, generally speaking. Um, so, why am I stressed out? I'm stressed out, I'm, I'm, I'm upset because some of the brothers are just wasting their talents, you know, going off arguing with witnesses and arguing with Muslims at tents is not profitable and so that upsets me. Um, one brother wobbling on the doctrine of hell, that upsets me. And uh, the sheer stress of preaching to 80 to 100 people and then at the back of you, you got five, six people wanting to come to talk to you, talk and, and, and want to know about Jesus. And, and then you've got Christians either arguing with each other or losing their temper or going off to the Jehovah's Witnesses or telling people they don't believe in hell and you're trying to preach to 80, 90 people and you're trying to, you, you need people behind you who are at the table, five, six people asking to know about Jesus and then someone gets converted and then someone wants to set up a Bible study with them and the person who wants to set up the Bible study hasn't got a clue what they're doing and I can't deal with all, I, I can't deal with all that while I'm preaching and I've got a, people behind me, I can't deal with 
oh, you're losing your temper, uh, could you not do that? Uh, oh, you're trying to set up a Bible study with that person. No, you, you're you not mature enough to do that. Uh, I can't deal with it all, all on my own. I just can't deal with it, and, it, and it's just stressing me out. Or well, I'll be preaching and there's a big crowd and then I turn around and there's a a big argument starting and, and, and someone's, two people are really having a go at each other and I'm, who's that, what's that? And it's two Christians arguing about theology or arguing about some personal issue. And I'm like, I'm trying to preach to 1800 people. I've got people behind me and you're, you two are snapping at each other and you're supposed to be Christians. And I can't do it. I just can't do it. So, um, so for the next week or two, I'm going to go to Liverpool. Um, I'm going to Liverpool on Saturday, and everybody can just do whatever they want to do on a Saturday in Manchester. If you want to wobble on the doctrine of hell you can go and wobble on the doctrine of hell if you want to lose your temper go and lose the temper if you want to pu push your pentecostalism you can go and push your pentecostalism you can all do whatever you want to do but i'm going to liverpool <laughs> on saturday i'm not coping with the stress anymore and if people want to work with me in manchester when i come back to manchester which i'll come back in a couple of weeks time then you need to get your house in order, you need to sort yourselves out, you need to, when you see my table, you need to say, Royal Blood Ministries, that's the work of Jason, Royal Blood Ministries, I like what he stands for, I like his principles, I'll work with him for that hour or for five hours, I'll come under his ministry there and we'll support him. Because we respect the ministry, we respect what he's doing, and I'll work with him for five hours or three hours, but when I work with him, there's some ground rules, and I'm going to stick to those ground rules and help him. Or if you see my table and you think, I don't agree with what he believes in, I don't agree with what he stands for, then go and do your own thing, basically. Because you're just going to get in my way. And I... And I have to say it because I've, I've been patient. I've put up with it for four or five years. I've, I've been patient with it, with everybody. I've been patient and patient. But there just comes a point where it's, it's becoming too stressful for me. And the sad thing is, lots of people were coming down to hear the preaching. The sad thing is we've got big crowds regularly coming to hear the preaching. We've got a good rapport with the Manchester people where they're coming to talk at the table, coming to ask questions. People are getting converted. A work, a, a great work is beginning to start. But everybody, because we're not, you're not working as a team, a proper team, I know that people come and help and people have been very helpful to me, very, very helpful. People have helped me a lot. But it's not good enough because we're not working as a proper team with proper ground rules. So here, here are my ground rules. A guide for Royal Blood Ministries evangelist and preachers ground rules. Number one, at all times you must keep cool and not lose your temper. Proverbs 16.32 Number two, you must respect the team leader for the day. 1 Corinthians 14.40 Number three, you must not argue with fellow Christians about theology at the table or any event we put on. You are not with us to push your theology, but preach the gospel. We have reformed and Pentecostal Christians on staff and work with us, so you must get on with Christians who join. Colossians 3, 13, 14. Number four, you must never rebuke a fellow Christian worker in public, but see them private and talk with them. And if you see a problem, if you see a problem, Matthew 18, 15 to 17. Number five, when a preacher is preaching, all workers should be talking with people who have come to hear the preaching, or you should be standing near the preacher to make sure they are safe. No talking with fellow workers when preaching is going on. 1 Corinthians 14, 40. Hmm. Number six, when a fellow worker is talking with the public, you must not butt in the conversation, but ask the worker 
if it's okay to join the conversation. 1 Corinthians 14 40. Number seven, you must never teach or share with the public unsound doctrine. You must hold to and teach the basic fundamentals of the Christian faith. Titus 1 9. Number eight, any new converts or people who have emotional problems, you must not start a Bible study or arrange to meet the person on your own. You must refer them to the team leader and they will help them find a church or deal with them as a team. 1 Corinthians 14 40. Number nine, avoid foolish arguing in the flesh. 2 Timothy 2 23 24. Number ten, you are encouraged to talk with the public to share the gospel and answer questions they may ask. We are not ashamed to give reasons for the faith. 1 Peter 3.15 Number 11. All team members should be willing to have training and join us for Bible study and prayer when they have time. That's team members, not associates. Because I work with evangelists abroad, I work with evangelists uh, around the country and, you know, they are associates. They're, they're, they can be team members as well, but they don't have to be team members. But all team members should be willing to have training and join us for Bible study prayer when they have time. And in time, I'll be wearing it. I have a t-shirt, but in time, I'll be trying to get people to wear a t-shirt and be part of a team. Number 12, all team members and associates should be involved in a local church. My key values are the key values of Royal Blood Ministries for evangelists and preachers. Number one, we are reformed conservative evangelicals, NICEA, FIEC, Federation of Independent Evangelicals, and the reformed creeds is our doctrine. We preach the gospel of grace. So we, Royal Blood Ministries holds to the fundamentals and the reformed faith. And if you join me or get involved with me, you don't have to agree with the reformed faith, but you have to respect the fact that I am from the reformed faith. Number two, we work with any Christians hold to the fundamentals of the faith. If you work with me, you have to hold to the fundamentals. So it's no good telling me you, you don't believe in the doctrine of hell, you believe in annihilationism. You have to hold to the fundamentals or we can't work together. No matter how much of a friend you are, no matter how, how much we're the best of mates, if you don't hold to the doctrine, fundamentals of the faith, then we cannot work together. That is my principle. And anybody who joins the table or joins the team or, or associates with me must hold to the fundamentals. I'm not going to be arguing and arguing and arguing about is the Bible inspired, is, is Jesus God, uh, did, is there a heaven and a hell. I'm not going to spend my time or waste my time arguing about fundamentals. You should know the fundamentals if you're getting involved in mission and evangelism. And if you don't know the fundamentals, you should ask and we'll, we'll teach you the fundamentals. But I'm not having people on team or working with me who deny the fundamentals. Number four, we value the local church. Oh, sorry, number three, we are a street preaching, apologetic, personal evangelism ministry. We're street preachers. So street preaching is, is, is very much part of Royal Blood Ministries. We're not a healing ministry, we're not, we're not a, a compassionate uh, ministry where we're giving out food. Uh, that, I'm not saying those are wrong, but I'm just saying that that's not what we're about. Uh, we're about preaching the word of God. Uh, so if you come, you know, some of the guys, some of us, we do help poor people, we will help poor people. Um, and, you know, from time to time we'll give out food, from time to time we'll help. We do we have and do help homeless people but our principal work is preaching the word of God so we're a preaching street preaching ministry and we're also an apologetic ministry we specialize in apologetics I train my workers those who've helped me I train them in apologetics I've tried to train people in how to defend the faith we go down to Hyde Park to do apologetics to defend the faith so if you join me in my team or you associate with me from time to time I will encourage you to 
I'll help you to try and defend your faith. And we're a personal evangelism ministry. We, uh, we're about talking to individuals and telling them about Jesus, gossiping about Jesus, telling people about the Lord, gossiping the gospel. So we're very strong on talking to individual people and sharing the gospel. Um, you know, so... Number four, we value the local church and expect team members and helpers to be involved in local churches. You know, you need to be in a local church. If you're not in a local church, you need to pray that God will guide you to a church. A church can be five people in a house. It doesn't have to be a big building. But you need to be in a, a, a fellowship where, where you are working or serving or involved in that church in some way, whether it's worshipping, uh, learning from the pastor there or whatever. But you need to be in the church. And we do not put down the church and we do not denigrate the church and we do not denigrate local churches and local pastors. We value pastors and we value local churches. Um, you know, we, God loves his people. God loves the local church. God loves the church. And uh, we, if you join Royal Blood Ministries, we're not going to be attacking the church. We're not going to be uh, putting down the church. We're, we're there to work with the church. The, the church meaning those who follow Jesus and, and the fundamentals. I'm not on about ecumenicalism. I don't agree with that. But I'm on about the true people of God. We do not put them down. We value the church and we will encourage people to get involved in local churches and we in we will not undermine the church we're not there to undermine the church we're there to support the church and we're accountable to the church number six we have a strong mission outreach to muslims if you join my blood ministries there is a big emphasis on reaching muslims so in the summer we go to Hyde Park, we debate, we share the gospel. So there's a big, big passion for Muslims, okay? So if you want to learn about Muslim evangelism, reaching Muslims, then we're the people to join. We specialize in that. So we go down to Hyde Park in summer and we debate Muslim apologists and we share the gospel to Muslims. So you have to be willing to learn about Islam, learn about it from us and how to answer Muslim questions. Seven, we value preaching as a form of evangelism and a key to building local churches. Our ministry is not just about uh, preaching the gospel, defending the faith, but we're very strong on expository preaching, the preaching of the word of God. We're very strong on building local churches and building Christians in the word of God. So if you join Royal Blood Ministries, if you come on board as a team member or if you uh, associate with me, you will always get solid Bible teaching. We will always bring you to good Bible teaching. We will always get, take you to the pure word of God and we will teach you and ground you and encourage you to be grounded in the word of God. We're big, very strong and big on Bible teaching. Okay. Uh, number eight, we value humility, love and accountability in the work we do. Uh, we seek to walk in humility and walk in love and a walk in accountability. Um, we do not, I do not tell anybody off in public. Any worker, I don't go to any worker, which some pastors, some leaders would do. But I never go to a worker and rebuke them in front of everybody. Like literally rebuke them, literally tell them off in public in front of everybody. You know, take them aside and have a word with them. We walk in humility, love. We love one another and accountability. It's important if you get involved with us that you're accountable. In some way, you're accountable. That's why you have to be in a local church because that shows that you're the person who's not uh, 
a shooting star who's just or a boy in a china shop but you can show that you have that humility and love to be able to subject yourself to people so that's why it's important to be in a local church but you need to realize that accountability is key there has to be certain parameters where you're accountable you know and so accountability is key so if you join Royal Blood Ministries you're accountable to Royal Blood Ministries if you join as a team member you're accountable to the leadership you're accountable to us but if you join uh, if you're an associate you have to be accountable somewhere you know you you have to be connected to a church or connected to a group where we know that you are accountable that you're not just gonna we're not just gonna hear that you're setting up Bible studies with teenagers on your own and getting yourself into problems and, and getting everybody else his name a bad name but you work you, you you're accountable to your church so that your church know what you're doing that your church know where you're going uh, people know what's happening with your ministry etc otherwise you could be doing things and, and, and getting yourself in trouble and, and getting everybody else in trouble so that's why we need to know that you're accountable and that's why I have to be accountable um, and it says we expect all workers to live godly lives and to live in obedience to the Lord so we need to be obedient to the Lord we, we need to be obeying the Word of God so um, I've had someone come and help me and uh, they're helping me to do the work and they're swearing in front of everybody they're literally swearing um, I've had someone come and help me and then I find that they're, they're sleeping with their boyfriend and I've had someone come and help me I find that they're smoking marijuana um, you know if you if you help if you come and help Royal Blood Ministries then we, we encourage each other to, to live uh, in a, bi a biblical way and uh, to, to, to live in a, in a right way. Um, and so there's a certain kind of standard that we need to be uh, aiming for in our lives. So those are the basic rules, basic guidelines. Like I said, I'm very, very downhearted today, very discouraged. I've had to come home today. I was looking forward to staying in town. I was going to, to stay in Manchester today from 12 o'clock in the afternoon till 12 o'clock at night. That's what I had planned. But I came home and, and it's only quarter past one, quarter past two. And I've come home, and I came home because of the brother I was talking to on the phone about hell, and he was telling me that he believes in annihilationism. And I came home because it's just one example of many, many examples of people just going and doing their own thing, really. And I just thought, I can't cope with it anymore. Tomorrow's Saturday. Uh, I had planned with someone to come into town with me on Saturday. But uh, to Manchester, but I'm not going into Manchester. I'm going to cancel it with his brother, and I'll tell him why. And uh, I'm just going to not get stressed out anymore. And I'm going to Liverpool and doing the work in Liverpool for a while. Maybe Liverpool and also Birmingham. Um, and that's what I'm going to do for a few weeks. And everybody who's uh, who works with me in Manchester on a Saturday, you need to think about where you're at. You need to think about whether you want to support that table. We have Muslims with their big gazebos. They're staffed properly. They're working together as a team. And you need to think about, do we want a, a, a counter work done with the table, with the cross, with the mics? And if we do, we need to support Jay. We need to get behind him and, and support him and give him the proper support that's needed and we need to work properly as a team so you need to decide in your minds that's what you're going to do and if you do you come under my mentorship and I will mentor some of you 
And some of you, if you don't want mentoring and, and you think you know it all, that's okay. I don't mind. But you still got to abide by the guidelines. And if you can't abide by the guidelines, or if you don't want to be met part of the team, then you need to go and do your own thing. And it doesn't mean to say I've fallen out with you, it just means to say I can't do the work with the chaos that I've been seeing, especially recently. Okay, and I'm asking the public out there, I'm asking the Christian public that out there, I'm asking for mature Christians, you've listened to my principles, I need mature pastors, mature evangelists, mature Christians who are grounded, who want to either work alongside me, you can work alongside me on a Saturday, or you can work as a team member, you can work as an associate where you associate with me, or you work as a team member. But either way, you want to work with me and you value the, value, the values that I have. But I need mature believers, mature Christians, mature pastors, mature evangelists, mature people to come down and say, Jay, we value this table, we value the preaching that's going on, we understand that people are being reached, people are, are opening up now, and we're going to stand with you and help you to get this off the ground, get, to help you get a team going in Manchester so that it can be run properly and, and directed properly. If people don't come forward, and if all the guys that have been helping me don't sh shape up and start shaping up, then I'm just going to go to Birmingham, I'm going to go to Liverpool, I'm going to go all over the country and, and find people that do want to work with me. Um, that's what I'm going to do. So it's all up to it's up to it's up to you guys in Manchester to to value what was being done and um, or to just do your own thing. You know, a lot of a lot of people come down. I'll say this and then I'll finish. But a lot of you come down and you come down for a chat. You come down to say hello, and I appreciate that. Some of you come and you, and you give a lot of help, and I appreciate that. But nearly every one of you are doing your own thing. And if there's a table there with a microphone, there's a ministry going on there. And you should have the sense to think, that's a ministry that's going on. We either buy into it and support it, or we go and do our own thing. If Ray Comfort was in Manchester, and he had all his people there, and he, and he had the mics out, there's no way I would go up and lose my temper in the midst of his work. There's no way I would go up and start pushing my Calvinism in his work. There's no way I would go into his work and start arguing about theology with everybody. There's no way I would go into his work and start setting up Bible studies with com his converts, with vulnerable people or, 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 or young ladies. There's no way I'd do it. Because he's doing a work there, and I respect that, and I would respect that. But you guys have not been respecting what I've been doing properly. You've just been doing your own thing. And I can't do the work like that. I just can't do it. And it's, and it's caused me, this week, unending stress. I've had to take a week out to pray and, about it, because it stressed me out so much. So I've gone on and on and on about it, but the choice is yours. Work with me, support me in the work, or do your own thing, guys. You know, and I don't want to fall out with anybody. I love everybody, great, but you need to do your own thing or support me properly. Um, yeah, so. And I, I just ask people to pray. I need a lot of prayer. I just need people to pray. I miss Frank and Kadeen. I wish they were here. Uh, I miss uh, Alan. Uh, and I miss a couple of other guys and people who, who, who helped me to have a, pro a, a proper way of working with people. I miss that. And... Um, you guys who've been helping me, I love you and I value everything that you've done for me. 
But when it comes to Saturday, we either need to work together as a team or or do our own thing, okay? And I, I just ask people to pray, please pray that God will send me people who want to work with me and, and who will affirm what I'm trying to do and stand with me in that because I'm finding it incredibly hard in Manchester. I'm, I'm, I've been blessed and excited and, and encouraged but I, it's being undermined every week by chaos really and a lack of maturity in most people. People are not acting in a mature way and, and just working in a mature way really. I don't want to go on, I keep going on about it, but the work is there, there's a, a great work to be done, a great work to, to get going, but it needs people to help, it needs people to get stuck in and work with me. Alright, God bless you, take care and God bless.